Yeah, because they're linked right up. Yeah, look at that. We've stepped up. We got these handy dandy cool boy wireless mics. Yeah. What are we working on tonight, Quinn? We're on the final stretch here for Project AP Juan S2000. Are we going to get this thing on the ground tonight? I mean, not with our new wheels, but like maybe with your RG2s. It's 8 o'clock. We got this. It's possible. If everything goes without hiccups, then yes, we can get it on the ground tonight. So, um, yeah, we're just basically bolting everything together. We should, we'll probably show um, a little bit more detail of the, uh, the knuckle extension or like the uh, Yeah, we're, the we're, we're only going to highlight the important things because, I mean, it's like watching paint dry, watching two bros install suspension arms. But a couple things I do want to make note of. Are they in frame? Probably not, right? No, not in frame. We weighed these. Oh, yeah. The new Belayed coils that we're switching to over the Tane Mono Sports. Now, I will say this. Mm -hmm. What? I was just going to say the weight difference. Oh, you want to say it? No, you could say it. You well, can... I want to say this, right? So, I, I run Tanes on most of my cars, right? And so, I'm going to put that out there. I, they're all the old school ones, though. The old Flex models, which still had aluminum bodies and aluminum top hats, which... They're aluminum? This is aluminum. No, I know these are aluminum. The Tanes are aluminum? No. No, all right, they're steel bodies. So those are yeah. mono sports, right? Okay. So there's the Flex Sports and the Flex Z. Like these are all their cost cutting because like tr them trying to compete with like Megan and all the other like mm -hmm. Chinese brand ones. And they're twin tube too, right? Well, my mono sports are actually a, yeah. a mono tube. Yeah. These are mono tubes also. Mono tubes are usually a little bit better when it comes to the damping, low, low yeah. speed damping. Yeah. Um, so, they, but they took a lot of cost cutting measures and to, to keep the, the price points down. So the mono sports, they're decent. Like the shocks actually perform very well. Mm -hmm. um, other than, uh, but again, is it, is it the shock that's the issue or is it more just the AP ones like edginess? Probably more the AP ones edginess and like just the other things, suspension geometry. But how much do we save per? Well, for the per, fronts were three pounds. Each. Each. Six pounds of weight savings in the front, and then the rear. 2.6 pounds each. Each. That's crazy. 11.2 <laughs> pounds of weight savings just by switching the coilovers. And we're adding helper springs to these, too. And the Blade Sports have helper springs. So kudos to Blade for making them very lightweight. I appreciate that, because mm -hmm. I like everything as light as possible without compromise. Um, I think, and I'm pretty sure the Tanes are lighter than the OEM. Yeah. Oh, Could wow. be wrong on that. I didn't actually weigh them back to back. I just assumed that they were because usually coilovers are like are lighter than the factory components. Mm -hmm. But I mean, S2000 has some pretty trick stuff, so maybe maybe they're not. But either way, this is a weight savings that's just awesome. And then we're getting five pounds. Oh, yeah. The calipers per caliper. Oh my god! Right. So, so awesome. Just just in suspension upgrades, that's over 20 pounds of weight savings. And that's definitely unsprung weight. Uh, whereas the shocks, I mean, I don't know if that counts. That doesn't. Count I don't know how you calculate yet. that. Yeah, like if it's considered it or not. Yeah. We are adding a little bit of weight, right? Because the spacers, the, the plates, spacers, um, and then the bigger ball joints in the rear. Yeah. But it's still like that's not adding more than a pound and a half. Yeah, no, you're so still. So this is still at least a twenty pound weight savings. Oh, and then the thicker pads in the front because it's the NSX pad. Yeah, um, but still, it's still gonna be a significant weight savings though. Either way, even with all that, the little things added back. I'm stoked. Like I, yeah. I really like want to like put this car on scales and see where it comes in at. Yeah. If I can like be at twenty six hundred pounds ish, and still retain my factory radio and AC, which this, which are in here. I'd be pretty happy. I think that's a good weight for a car making 240 wheel horsepower. Are your are the new wheels lighter than your RG2s? That's a great question. We I have no weigh them, weigh them overall with the tire. We'll have to the weigh them. Well, that's mounted. the thing. We can we know the weights of the new wheel, our wheel design, um, without a tire on it. But and you just ordered your tires. And I just ordered tires. Settle on some Advan Neova 200 yep. treadwares for our, our slip angle edition wheel. It's you don't have your Advan tires on your Advan wheels. Yeah, that's, that makes too much sense. <laughs> I never buy Advans, so, because they're usually expensive. Yeah, they were, they were, good, they they were a good deal, out. yeah. I can't believe how expensive 200 treadwear tires have gotten these days. They've gotten as fast as 100 treadwear tires in, back in the day, though. It makes a hard argument for buying race compounds when you could just buy 200 treadwear and run them to the track and back, which is what I'm going to do exactly mm -hmm. with, with this wheel and tire setup. Um, initially, though, we might just throw the Advans on there just to go get it aligned and drive it around. That's probably a good idea. Yep. 
But so yeah, let's get started. We'll show a little bit more detail of we'll the highlight uh, the important bits knuckle, for sure. the yeah. knuckle offset yep. um, with the ball joint in the front, and and then once it's all together, we'll show some more detail of everything together. Yes, get some B-roll. All right, let's do it. Let's get this thing done. That was a nice slow pan. Is it professional? <laughs> Trying yeah. to hold the camera super steady too. <laughs> All right, so now uh, we're just gonna show a little bit more detail on the, uh, the camber kit from Blade Motorsports. Um, I think this is brilliant because it actually does two things. Um, it does increase the negative camber by moving the, uh, the OEM ball joint. You don't have to get offset ball joint for this. You can use the OEM ball joint. It just moves it out, which effectively changes, adds negative camber by moving the knuckle out. It also does in, uh, correct the uh, steering geometry too. The uh, roll center gets corrected with this just being spaced out for a lower car. Yeah, when you lower the yeah. car. So um, the install is like super easy. There's, uh, there's three bolts in the, in the bracket. Uh, one of them has a, uh, one of the bolts has a shorter head. That's the one that goes inside, inside this little recess spot here. So one here. You gotta get yourself a 10 millimeter hex head. Come on, should've got power tools. We have them. Yeah. And basically, uh, this is where it would mount up normally. With these, uh, with these brackets, it's just moving the, uh... actually, let me make sure I got the right spot, yep. So it's moving it out, effectively just uh, kicking the bottom. I'll let you tighten it and then I'll get in there. Yeah. Yeah, so the longer bolt goes through both the, uh, the ball joint and the, uh, the bracket. And then there's another short one that goes into the threaded spot on the, uh, on the bracket itself. You don't have to show me threading it in. We'll get them all tight. You have to get it tight just so they see. And that's how it offsets there. Oh boy, yeah. we're having focus issues here. Too much happening. Yeah, it's a little close. It's a, that's a macro lens. I love it. Yeah. So this is, Oh, clever let me, let me tighten that up first. clever way to, to correct for this um and it adds one pound of weight per corner it does but we're taking off a lot of weight we're, still, we're still about 20 pounds of weight savings for this whole project um i think it's worth it to add the weight just for the the negative camber i'm probably going to run front camber around three degrees yeah i think it was at 2.6 2.7 before so that was no camber kit with lowered so mm -hmm. you get a little bit of camber gain lowered um, I think we're going to push this out to like around three. What's your, what was your red me out at? Uh, three and a quarter. 3.25. In the front and only one in the back. <laughs> so maybe I just do three in the front and then somewhere like around like 1.8 in the rear. I think that should be good. Oh, I'm doing a terrible job. Or one, one five in the rear. I tighten this one and it's off centered. Of course, I'll ask Alex and get the recommendation. All right, well, we got the just here, Matthew. Yeah. So the new, the new bolt is in here, holding the plate, yep. and then, then we're gonna bolt the uh, ball joint to those. Yep. And you can get about, what did it say, four and a half degrees total? Yeah, that's got, that's got to be what, like really lowered and yeah. camp, camp For all you stance boys out there. <laughs> no, we don't encourage that. <laughs> I mean, it's fine if you want to do it, just don't do it around us. Well, it's just a solution. You can help, help Alex out, you know? <laughs> All right, yeah, all you stance guys, go yeah. go buy these from Alex. <laughs> Support his business. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to it. We just want yep. to highlight this. Yep. I'm gonna block the calipers. Yeah, stand right in front of the <laughs> wheel well here. Those beautiful calipers. They do look nice. Yeah, they really do. Super ricer, but I love it. We're here. We did it. You notice we may be calmer than usual. It's because I'm, I'm exhausted. Matchy's been working like a monkey for a very long time. Nine hours today I've been working on cars. I'm, I'm just... And you being a mechanic full time. I would hate cars. I would too. It's just... It's tough work. Yeah, Think my, about that, kids. Yeah. You my might. dad used to be a mechanic, and he told me, do not be a mechanic if you enjoy cars. Yep. So... It becomes a means to an end. Yep. But we're done. We finished the suspension overhaul-ish. Yeah. We got to check ride height when we put it on the ground. Yeah, we, we made some calculations to try and uh, determine where it's going to land. We we're trying to get it to land in the same spot as the, the teen uh, monosports. We got to say tain. Tain. I think teen sounds better, but tain. Whatever. It's like the rain. Yeah. Tain. 
Not you. Sorry. You gotta make sure all the kids at home. You can take my JDM card. I'll give it. There you go. Um, What were we gonna say? Oh yeah, because we put the knuckle extenders on the front, which changes it a little bit. Changes the height a little bit. It offsets the ball joint. Yep. For the. for the for the uh, rear, lower control arm, and then the rear ball joints yep, the and the knuckles are 15 millimeters extended. Same thing. Which yeah. it says that the lower the car, even a stock car, if you put them on there. So we tried to account for that in our measurements, and we adjusted the coilovers next to the tains because I had the height set on the tains. Yeah. Um, yeah, it makes sense because if you think about where the where the control arms bolting up to the the knuckle, the or the knuckle is going to be up a little bit higher right. from the normal. Right. location on the control arm so it's going to lower the car 15 millimeters six and a half hours later essentially we'll see when we put on the ground but i have a feeling you're making a little some coilover adjustments it still needs to be aligned yep that's the last real major thing but all the grunt work is yep. done so lessons learned um if you could buy the arms with the bushings right yeah now, that would just do it that. was easy once we got to that part where the, the control arms were nice and the bushings were installed that part was that part was easy getting all there. the stuff off kind of sucked too like the seize bolts the caster bolts here yeah. that sucked um getting all the all the bushings out was no fun you know can you beep this from me yeah you fucking <laughs> saying that we couldn't Shit. they're saying that we put pre- oh they're like you could just press it out with the lip on there my oh, yeah, he's like, he's my like, the tool tons- is right there. Like, yeah, it's right there, but we didn't try that. You, you think yeah. that we didn't try to press <laughs> yeah, this out? My 20-ton yeah, okay. press is having a f***ing hernia. <laughs> I saw that one come. He, del- he deleted it, though. Did he? Yeah. I, then he offered yeah. to come. Yeah, come, come help us. Yeah. You, you, I want to see, come on, we'll, we'll have you on here. You can supervise this very f***ing project <laughs> moving forward. Keyboard warriors, oh, man. crying out loud. <laughs> I never even ran. I just ignore all all those comments, but I'm just letting you know. You're just wasting your time. That's it. Yeah, we we didn't even try pressing them out. Okay. (laughs) Anyways, so (laughs) the other thing was to fit the blade calipers. uh, You do have to notch your your dust shields. Yep. So I I took some stuff out. We didn't film this because we just wanted to get this thing back together. Use your imagination. I used, I used the cutoff wheel and just notched it. We're to, not reinventing the wheel. We're just really installing parts. Like it's yeah, really there's not. not that, yeah. Was there, there was one other thing though. I thought that we want to make note um, of. I mean, the brake line mounting. The the mounting. You have to come up with a solution for that because you can't use the uh, the stock mounting. That's right. Brake line. So the 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 coilovers no longer have the brackets for your for your brake line, mm-hmm. and. Um, with the with, with, where the brake line attaches to the caliper, which is in the center about here, I know you guys can't see it, but it's here on the back side. You can't use the factory bracket that it bolts to the back of the knuckle anymore. At least not with my stainless braided lines. Maybe with factory lines it's okay, but I put these braided ones in here and um, I cannot use them any longer. So I just zip tied the line off. I mean, I don't yeah, know. I mean, that's. I that's really don't know like what else really I can do. what else I can do to it, but like I think that should still give it uh, clearance when it when you turn lock the lock and when the suspension compresses mm-hmm. so that's really it there was also another thing with the ball joints the, the the nuts that came with some of the ball joints like they go when you when you tighten them all the way they go past the hole for the cotter pin right and so they're castle nuts too so essentially they can loosen up and yeah. then you're gonna have slop in there so we we, we ended up re- the oem yeah we reused the oem ones yeah. um and then they're okay and then we put cotter pins them in the proper location so matthew is going to grab the camera Yep. We're gonna give you guys a quick tour, and then we gotta we gotta surprise to finish What's this missing? all off. What's missing from here? Oh, oh this, I'm is, not, this, this is missing. This is missing. Well, actually, maybe I should just announce it right now because it, it'll go into the whole setup, and then we'll give a tour of the suspension. Okay. So, previously on the car, again, this is I didn't really care too much about competition on this, so like I just wanted a fun street car. An S two thousand is not a torque monster by any means, um, so I wanted it to be tossable and uh, be able to hoon it around. I was running these Advent RG2s, which are actually kind of S2000 specific fitment. They are an eight and a half with a 50 offset or 51, one or the other in the rear and a seven and a half with a 45 offset in the front. Um, this was my street wheel and tire setup. These are Continental, what are these? I always forget the name of them. Uh, they're Extreme Contact. Contact. D- Extreme Contact DWs. Yeah, not the newest version. Please. It's 340 tire, but I mean, these are like really like just shit tires they're, well i shouldn't say they're shit tires they're great for a street car yeah they are good for a street car i have them on my miata they, but when you get them hot well you got the newer version these are yeah old. that's true so these are these are years older 
But when you get these hot on track, like once they're once they're hot, they just they're gone. They're greasy. So the new setup, well, which we've 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 I haven't, unveiled even, these, I haven't even panned that down to them. We've unveiled these previously. I'm, I'm turning this one so you can see there is a little bit of concave here. These are the official slip angle media wheels. We haven't named the model of them yet because uh, this is the first the first set to come off the press. They're forged 6061 aluminum, fully forged. Uh, these are finished in hyper black because I figured this would be a good match for the S2000. I wanted something a little bit more flash here. Uh, these are 17 by eight and a half with a 50 offset front and rear. So it's a square setup. And we tried to optimize the concave and the wheel design here, given that S2000, you can't fit a lot of room in there. I don't want to roll my fenders on the car. So let's just put that out there. My quarter panels and my fenders, I'm not rolling them. So if I can't fit it in there, um, on with, with just camber, then I'm not going to do it. And I also don't want to compromise camber either. I don't want to run a lot of camber in the rear because I want the, the setup to work, work well. So I think we did a pretty good job. The, the spoke design was, I, we used the TE37, heavily influenced from that, but we made it a five spoke design and we brought the uh, spoke out farther to the edge of the rim to kind of optimize the concave. And it gives plenty of clearance for big brakes like the Blade Sports Calipers. There's no, no clearance issues whatsoever. So this was a staggered setup. This is a non-staggered setup. For this, the tire size was a 245 4017. I know a lot of guys like to run the 255 4017s, but you gotta understand like S2000 doesn't have a lot of power. I don't care about all out grip. I want it to work well on track and I want to set a good lap time when we test it. I think this car is gonna actually maybe be a record lap even with the new setup, um, with the new tire setup and all the suspension stuff. But, 245.40 is, is a smaller tire than 255.40 diameter, so it actually bumps gearing a little bit and it's lighter. People don't account in the weight of the, the, the tires. I don't like that. The front was a 225.45, which is actually taller than this diameter. The new setup is a, is a square 235.40.17, and I did that because I'm running an eight and a half with a 50 offset in the front. I don't know how that's gonna fit without rolling the fender and I don't wanna roll the fender. So this is actually a narrower sidewall than both of these. And that what? was- What about the tire compound? But the tire compound is way grippier. These are Advan Neovas. Um, I don't know if they're a specific model of Neova. Uh, AO62, is that what it is? We should have looked this up beforehand. ADO, ADO 8Rs. ADO 8Rs, sorry. They were on closeout on tire racks, so I just bought them. Yeah, they're good um, tires. I've, I've run Advans in the past. Advan usually makes pretty good, pretty good stuff. Um, I don't know how these are because everybody changes their compounds all the time. Some of them like are super heroic grip. Some of them get greasy quicker. Some of them like heat cycle out faster. I, I don't know what these are gonna do. So we'll just have to see when we run it. But they're gonna, they're gonna put down a way better lap time than these things could ever, ever do. And if you guys watched the Slip Angle episode, like once the fronts get hot, my microphone's crapping out, so I'll just say that one more time. It's a really tight track, and it's very hard on the front. So most cars, the front's overheat, and they just start to wash out. These, I think, will definitely hold their own, and I, that shouldn't be an issue. So I'm um, excited to see it. Try and match you. Am I still green? We're good. Okay. So let's go over and give the, everybody a little tour of the new suspension. Going front, front first? Yeah, we'll do the front. There's the most bling on the front. So first, we'll start here with the blade. Uh, aluminum calipers, again, these save five pounds per caliper over the stock steel ones, which is awesome. The Blade coilovers here with Swift springs and they have helper springs, so this should help ride compliance. Here we can see our rust bulleted refreshed control arms with uh, the Blade spherical bushings. Brand new ball joints in the upper on the fronts here. I had to get new end links because my stock ones were not happy when they took them off, so these are white line. Uh, sway bar end links, front and round if you can get that on camera. I'm just trying to get the focus. One, one oh. sec. Hold. Oh, we want to show the... Uh... Oh. We're back. So yeah, our lower, our lower control arm also rust bulleted, all belay spherical bushings in here. Here's the white line sway bar end link. I already had braided stainless lines. You can kind of see how I just kind of used the factory things and tied them off here to keep the line clear of everything. Looks good. What you didn't see, we installed, <laughs> we installed the steering racket. I'm sorry, I, I accidentally hit the button. What did we install? Man, we're just like I'm, doing great tonight. I'm freaking beat right, right now. We're gonna cut Matthew some slack because he's been working all day. We installed a steering rack anti-bump steer kit to correct the geometry from the lowered car. 
So we didn't show that. You just take the steering rack bolts out and raise the rack up and put new yeah, longer you bolts. You do that in. for a lowered car. It's it just corrects. It the sucks and it's tight in there and like we did it though. Yeah, it's done. So moving along to the rear. So nice refreshed upper arm. I did all new upper ball joints and everything because the boots were kind of shoddy and like this car's got 130,000 miles on it. Uh, blade coilovers again. The white line sway bar end links down here. These ones got a little bit of aluminum gold uh, for a little extra bling. Lower control arm and there's really the nothing. toe arm. Oh yeah, the toe arms. These are the Megan Racing toe arms here. That's going to correct the um, toe in effect that the AP1 has. And then here, show the show the new lower ball joints. These are the extended ball joints down yep. here in the bottom of the knuckle. That's where they end up sitting on the car. Oh, one other thing we did. Are your transmission mounts? Oh yeah. I was like, I should put new transmission mounts. I changed the engine mounts in this about 5,000 miles ago. That's half of one. Yeah, they were, they were both broken. Both of them broken. And I, and I had a feeling something, look at this messy ass bench. Yep. I had a feeling something was off because multiple times a quick second to third gear shift just like not finding the gate and like getting grinding so um i had a feeling that the mounts were at least like worn out but yeah they're a complete failure so new transmission mounts in there i think it's time to throw these reels on and, and lower this thing down i'm ready we're gonna do it and yeah. we're gonna show you guys what it looks like and then keep in mind we gotta set right height get an alignment and was there one other thing i had to do we got balance the wheels. Balance the wheels. Our new wheel balancers arriving this week, but we have our mount there already, so yep. it's nice to be able to do wheels in house. Mm -hmm. All right, let's put them on. All right. Testicles, testicles, testicles. Stance Nation. Yes, boy. What do you think, buddy? Well, I was really hoping I wouldn't have to adjust right height, but it looks like I'm gonna be adjusting right height now. Yeah. I think we were pretty close in the rear. The rear's not bad. I would maybe bring the rear down like five, six millimeter, and that's about it. The fronts are, and it's funny because like we, when well, you're showing the bad side here, Matthew, with those awful oh, green lugs. Oh yeah, the green lug nuts. I need to get black lug nuts, all right? Like oh. we put black lug nuts on this side, but they're extended and they're open-ended, which I'm not, I'm never running those ever again. But the green definitely doesn't go with the blue calipers. What was this thought here? Oh yeah, we raised the coilovers higher than the tanes. Yep to account for the, what we were gonna get by those extenders, but. Wasn't enough. Wasn't enough in the front. That's just like, you can't even get a finger in here. Nope. Super tucked. You can go to Wendy's though, this ride height. Wendy's? <laughs> Is that still a thing? What's that Wendy's? Like, oh, cause like all the ricers hang out yeah. at Wendy's? That's, I used to go to Wendy's, I guess that's true. And the Berlin turn bike for those yep. of you from Connecticut. Yeah, this can go down a little bit. I still think it's gonna settle. I don't think it's gonna, we're, Matt, you and I were jumping on this thing like a bunch of monkeys. <laughs> this is only gonna go down just like a little bit, quarter yeah. of an inch. That's it. But. Well, we got our work cut out for us. Good you job, Matt, you. Fix the ride height and then we're gonna get it aligned. Ride height alignment, new lug nuts. And, oh, I'm gonna put the interior back in it, but that's another video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like my macro lens. If you have your shitty comments, please leave them below. I can't wait to read them. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to affect our day a lot. It's going to really, yeah. I barely even have time to read them anymore. Yep. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Till next time, done.